All right, this is disgusting. Police near Boston say a teacher jumped in the sack with a boy and did it, literally, more than 300 times. And she's married. Here she is. Let's get a picture of her. Christine McCallum, 29. She's accused of luring the boy when he was 13, boozing him up with jello shots, rum, vodka, and then having sex with him. Uh, sometimes police say this happened right under the husband's nose. He's sleeping upstairs. She's getting it on with the 13-year-old kid downstairs. Allegedly went on for two years. The prosecutor said uh, that she... Uh, basically, as she's writing love letters to the kid, she would choose the boy over her job. Well, guess what? That's the way uh, things went down. She got fired, thankfully, and she's charged with seven counts of statutory rape. Uh, joining me now to talk further about this one, what's going on with these ladies? Dr. Robbie Ludwig, a psychotherapist, and we're also taking your calls at one eight seven seven tell hln Let me give folks, Robbie, a little more detail on this one. The way it goes is the kids are being raised by a single dad. Uh, the boy she had the fling with is 13. He's got a younger brother. She's called in to tutor the younger brother. And not long after that, within a couple of months, she starts filling the 13-year-old with booze, and, and they start the affair. Um, what... what Give me the mindset here. From all accounts, she's happily married. Why, why is she going after well, a 13-year-old? Yeah, clearly she's not happily married. Right. Yeah. What we find with these women is sometimes they are emotionally more like teenagers than actually the adults they appear to be um, as, as a teacher. And so some of these teachers almost forget their age. They're drawn to these teenagers. And there's a lot of sexuality um, when you're working with teenagers in the air. Uh, there's a lot of hormones flying around. And for the teacher that is um, either psychologically disturbed or not sophisticated or not trained, they can think that they're falling in love with these very young students and cross a, a dangerous boundary. Yeah, exactly. We'd hope that our teachers would keep their hormones in check. We know teens' hormones uh, are obviously uh, raging. And I, one more before we get to the calls. I mean, don't these teachers know they're going to get caught? We do these stories far too often. Oh. Right. I mean, or is that I, just out the window? That logic is gone here. Well, I think there's a lot of denial when it comes to romantic, poor judgment, um, maybe a lot of wishful thinking or fantasizing that maybe they can run off and, and live this fabul fabulous life with the teenager. I mean, we think about Mary Kay Letourneau. She actually did that. Um, so I think when people are kind of acting impulsively in the moment, they're not necessarily thinking about the consequences of their actions. Yeah, and uh, Letourneau's a different story, but how many lives did she destroy with her actions? She left a husband and four kids who I'm sure are still reeling from uh, yes. th those decisions. Uh, let's get a call in. Jeff in Indiana. Jeff, your uh, hey, thought buddy. here? Yeah, what's going on? How are you? Great show, man. Thanks. Hey, listen, you know, this is kind of a no-brainer. I mean, the last three, four, five of these cases that were in the news, they all got off easy. What do we think is going to happen? Hey, uh, let me, let me, Robbie, let me ask you this. Um, is, is there a pattern here? It seems like, and not all are the same, the ages yeah. vary a little bit, but we have seen a few where it's almost that same uh, M.O., mid to late 20s, married, and, and just ready to give up everything for some kid. Well, I, I think in part, you know, some of these teachers are not trained, um, so they're not supervised to know that, you know, it, they may be attracted to some of these students. In fact, that's probably going to happen. And then work with a supervisor on, that, not how to, on how not to give in to those feelings, similar to the way uh, therapists are trained. So I think that's part of it. The other piece is, you know, some of these um, students are very seductive and if a person is not healthy and not trained they can get seduced it does not make them right okay um, but I think that's what happens quite a lot okay I got to follow up on that one I mean let's we would hope the teachers would know I, I mean if there's someone a young student is attracted those feelings have got to go they've got to be squashed well there's that's part ego, of the job right there's ego that gets involved and also they're getting um, their um, romantic their ego is being met and it's very hard oh. for some of these teachers to resist okay let's get another call in Stacy your comment or question here Stacy uh, yes go ahead well I'm a teacher in Iowa and I think that what's really interesting about this is that, that your callers even calling in can name the handful of people who have done this. Right. You know, most teachers, it's not about their ego. It's not about them at all. <laughs> They're in this to really help kids, and they care about kids. And as parents, unfortunately, have stopped meeting the needs of their kids, those kids are turning to their teachers for more and more roles. We fill so many roles, social worker, pastor, counselor, nurse. Mm. 
I and think you're hitting on something, Stacey. And let me say this. We're not here to indict teachers. As you said, Stacey, and we thank you for your service to our kids. You have more impact than probably you'll ever know. Um, uh, but I think you could be hitting on something there that uh, parents, are, are we abdicating our role a little bit too much? And we, we want teachers to do a little too much, uh, take over our job. I think that's, we're heading in a different area, but that kind of sets the table for some of this stuff. Because, Robbie, as we read this story, uh, these kids being raised by a single dad, and the way they tell the story on her side is she was kind of wanted to mother them. She'd invite them yes. over. She'd feed them. Um, why did this take such a sick turn then is my question. Well, I, I think the, the caller brought up a really good point that when you look at these students, what they have in common is the students who are seduced very often come from problematic backgrounds. So they are vulnerable to these teachers. They seek these teachers out because they want their needs met and then it just takes this romantic, dangerous turn. Um, so that's what's so scary about the scenario. It's usually the students who are very fragile and in need mm -hmm. that very often get caught up in these situations. Robbie, we just got a few seconds left, but I got to ask you, and I'm, I'm reading between the lines with you. Are you trying to say that we have to train our teachers to be prepared Absolutely. for those impulses? Yes, I think that we need to assume when you are working with teenagers, there's a lot of sexuality in the air, that it's normal to wow. be attracted to certain students, and then how do you not act on it? Yes, I think we need to bring it out Ooh. there, and, and so we can deal with it. It's okay. a reality. Well, I'd like to continue this conversation, but that's all the time we have. It does frighten me, though, that we have to get to the point of training our teachers, but uh, you're no, the expert here. No, training's a good thing. Well, it's maybe it is. a good thing. Knowledge it is power.